right? Obviously, you're free to check this unit wise, and you actually should check this unit wise. So that in case I did any mistakes, you can correct me, but we should be good here. Okay, and then state three, we know that state three pressure two equals pressure three. It's a constant pressure process, so therefore, um, pressure three is also 311. So I can go ahead and eliminate pressures here pressure two and pressure three. We can calculate volume three now because we have the temperature and the volume, so we can go ahead and do that. We're going to do exactly the same thing we did here, but then obviously accounting for the differences. Okay, so if we want to do this, three, 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 then this is the same, this is the same, this pressure is going to be different and the temperature is going to be different. So my temperature three we know to be, it was given in the start, right? Yeah, 323 Kelvin. And then the pressure we've just calculated to be 311.42. Okay, so this gives me 0.2976. Ooh, and this is interesting, right? Because not only I know the volume now, but I also know the volume and the um, temperature have changed from 2 to 3. And note that both of them have decreased. Both the volume and the temperature have decreased. We go from, let's give you, let's zoom out here. All right, we're going from a volume of, where is my volume? There you go. We're going from a volume of 0.4 to a volume of 0.3, right? And we're going from a temperature that was, where's my temperature, T2, 467, we're going down to the 323. So I am sure now I can eliminate this possibility here. It's not gonna be greater energy, right? The pressure is the same, temperature volume less, so therefore it cannot be that. All right, cool. Um, so what next? We need, uh, we know this now. So we need these guys, all right? So obviously these guys are gonna be a combination of the work from one to two and the work from two to three. And here the energy, the heat from one to two and the heat from two to three. We know this to be zero, so we can eliminate that already. We need to calculate this guy. Uh, we know this one to be 120. So we know that already, and we need to calculate this guy. Okay, so work, let's do that, work from two to three. We know work is the integral as we go from PDV from V2 to V3, it's not a V, V3. Pressure happens to be constant from two to three, so that means pressure can come out of the, of the integral, and therefore we just have simply P delta V. Okay, and we happen to know all these. Um, we happen to know all these uh, volumes, so that's easy for us. The pressure is 300 and something. So work from two to three is 311.42. That multiplies the difference in volume from 0.2976 minus the point. 4305. Okay, what we're doing here is multiplying kilopascals by meters cubed. As we saw, this is joule, so this is going to be a give me a kilojoule as an answer. And the work that we get out of here is 41.38 kilojoules. Okay, all right, so let's think about what's going on here for a moment. We're going from two to three, we're decreasing. So that's the that's the um, insight we've gathered just before, right? We're decreasing in energy, therefore we cannot be going higher. So this cannot be the case anymore. So we need to either be going down here or be going down here, right? Those are the two, only two options. Um, what else? What else? Uh, we are missing Q as we go from two to three. And to do that, we're gonna be uh, needing to release, uh, to release and to relate the two to three uh, relationships, we need to go from Q from two to three. And we know delta U and we know uh, work, right? So check it out. If I want to find heat, and I know the work, 
and it can also calculate delta u using my CV relationship, then I can relate these three concepts to be able to find what's the heat, right? So the first thing I need, well, first thing I needed was this guy. The next thing I need is this, so then I can calculate this. All right, how am I going to grab delta u from 2 to 3? I'm going to relate uh, CV and the delta t like we did before. Okay, so in this case here, CV is the same, obviously, point, uh, 0.718. And then my delta t as we go to from 2 to 3, we're actually decreasing in temperature, right? So the final one is 323, and the initial one is 460. 7.13 again units kilojoules kilograms kelvin so we're missing one kilogram there one kilogram and then we'll multiply that by kelvin and kilograms now so kelvin kelvin kilograms kilograms we're left with kilojoules which is good and i get that my internal energy uh is going to be negative 103.4 okay so once again confirming triple checking that my internal energy has indeed decreased and it has decreased by an amount that is smaller than my initial 120 was it 120 right right so note that we're going 120 in the energy scale here we're going 100 120 upwards and then 103 downwards so we're not going all the way down to here so we just eliminated this possibility here right and we're left only with this one here so this is what's happening on an energy scale with our internal energy of our air as we're going from state one to two to three okay so where are we we know this now we know this now the only thing we don't know is the heat okay all right so let's analyze this on our diagram here what we have going on we have we noticed that we're um, our volume is decreasing, right? So that means we're compressing, right? So if you think about state two, let me draw this quickly. State two and state three. That's what we have, right? On state two, we have a bigger volume. On state three, we have a smaller volume. For that to happen, what needs to be happening is we need to push down on the system. So we need to some work to be going in. And we know the amount of work going in is 41 kilojoules, right? So let's think about what's going on here on our little diagram. We have um, work. Oops. We have work going into my system, and we have the internal energy decreasing. We, we're sure about those two things. So what are the options for heat well let's think about it let's just use some random numbers let's say our internal energy is decreasing by 100 and our work is also entering by 100 so what does that mean we mean we're giving 100 and decreasing by 100 so that only way that this can be true according to the first law is if 200 kilojoules leave my system right because know that the energy is being that's been given to my system in the form of work is not being used to increase its internal energy whatsoever right so what if we are, you know, what if this number is, um, let's think about it, like 2. So that's going to be 102, right, over here, 102. So whatever energy, um, whatever the combination of the decrease in energy that I have on my internal energy and the work that I have giving to my system has to be leaving in the form of heat, 100%. So in this case here, we can be sure heat is leaving the system, and we can be sure the amount of heat is going to be a combination of whatever decrease in internal energy we happen to observe, which is 103, and whatever amount of energy is being um, given to my system in the form of work. Okay, so first law tells us that Q, uh, delta U equals Q, work and in this case here we have q will be this is from two to three by the way will be a hundred and three point four minus a hundred uh forty one point forty one point thirty eight thirty eight kilojoules all right so therefore q from two to three will be negative one hundred and forty four point eight 
all right? So this is the amount of heat leaving my system from two to three. Now, know what happened. From one to two, and we can go back to the diagram to be sure of this. From one to two, I have heat entering my system. And from two to three, you have heat leaving my system. So the total amount of heat is actually a combination of both. We're giving 120, we're releasing 144, right? So, and know how interesting this is, because if it were just that, if it were just heat, then and we're putting in 120 and losing 144, then that means that my state three would have to go down here, right? Because we're losing more energy than we're giving. But when we take into account work, which did not uh, happen in the first instance there, but is account is happening in the second instance, then we can be we end up with the situation we have, which is we start down here in the energy scale, we go all the way up there, and then we end up in an intermediary state. All right. So total work is going to be the combination of the first one work that's zero plus this one, so just this one, and then total heat is going to be the 120 minus the uh, 144. So now we can finish this off by saying, okay, amount of total work, work total will be work from one to two plus work from two to three. We happen to know um, that there's no such thing as work from one to two because there's no change in volume. So this is just zero minus 41.4, which is equal to negative 41.4 kilojoules. And that's the answer. That's the total work of this situation here. And the total heat, the total heat, that will be as we go from one to two and two to three. And in this case, there was 120 that's going in, and there is 144.8 coming out, right? So therefore, that is negative 24.8 kilojoules. And that will be my answer for total heat in this situation here. Okay, so in terms of numbers we're done, the only thing that's left for us to do is to draw the um, PV diagram that was required of us, okay? Note that, you know, since more is released than absorbed, then the net heat is released, right? So that's what this is, this negative sign is saying, right? If we, um, if we want the total, the total is going to be 24.8 kilojoules being released. All right, next, just to finish it off, what is my PV, what does my PV diagram look like? So this is pressure volume, not pressure specific volume, just to be sure. And we're starting... We're starting at um, 0.43, our V1 is 0.43, and this is in meters cubed, right? 0.43, and we're not changing volume in the first one, but we are changing pressure, right? We're increasing our pressure. Our first pressure is 200 kilopascals. And this is in kilopascals. Okay, so we're 200, and we're increasing to the 311 that we found for P2. Right, so we're going from, but not changing in volume. So this is my state two. And then state three, we're not changing in pressure, but we are decreasing in volume. Our, and our new volume that we found was uh, 20.29-ish. This is approximately, right? And we're still on the same pressure, so this is gonna be somewhere here. But, so what we're doing in this problem is we're going from here to here, and then like so. Okay, so they ask us to put the temperatures too. There's no way to put the pressures here unless we do this. So this is going to be 300 Kelvin. This is going to be 467 point or something Kelvin. And this is going to be 323 Kelvin. All right, so that's um, the PV diagram. We can end the problem now. Note that from state two to state three, both the internal energy dropped Right? We have a change in temperature that shows that. And the volume dropped, right? So the volume we decreased. Okay, so the energy thus needs to be released, right? In both instances, we have a delta U drop and a work drop. So because it can be destroyed, it needs to be released somehow, and the only way for it to be released, because it's a closed system, is in the form of heat. And that's how we get the um, 144 leaving the system. All right, so long problem, yet hopefully simple problem. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. 
If this video was helpful, consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.